What's going on everybody? Doug Lane here, Fast Lane Car Care. Today, I want to do a fun little video. Uh, you know, this cold weather kind of slows things down, makes life a little bit difficult in the detailing game. Nothing too crazy though, but uh, I had some time, so I figured I would uh, go over the top five questions that I get asked. Um, so these are questions that I, I get, you know, when I'm at people's houses, if they're there, you know, a lot of times they will hang out with me or they'll pop out periodically and, you know, watch or ask questions or whatever, which is cool. I'm happy to do that. I really enjoy getting to come out and meet you guys. I've met a lot of really, really cool people, uh, through this job. Um, but I figured I'd just go over the top five questions that I get. So... First one, probably the most commonly asked question is, how long have you been doing this? So, legally, I'm going on the third year now, um, legally. I uh, did it for about a year under the table, uh, and then before that, I just had been taking care of my own stuff since I was a kid. So, if you count that experience, it's about 15 years. Um, obviously, when I was 15, I wasn't, uh, you know, polishing cars. I didn't know anything about that, but... Um, knew how to clean them and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, how much percentage of your business is detailing versus tinting? So it's really kind of tricky. I would have to actually look at uh, at the tags. I've got software that every job I, I tag it, so it kind of keeps track. Um, but sometimes I forget to tag a job. But I would say it's really pretty close. It's pretty much 50-50. And the weird thing is, like, might go a week and you might do nothing but tinting, you know, maybe one detail here or there, and then the next week you won't tint anything and it'll just be detail, detail, detail. So it's kind of like it kind of flip flops a little bit. Um, some weeks it's it's a good mix of both, which is nice because, you know, I'm not the kind of person that likes to just be stuck doing one thing. That's why I love mobile detailing because I'm going different places, meeting different people, working on different cars. Uh, it's not just the same old mundane just. It's that that kind of that kind of life's not for me. Um, which would I rather do? Now that's a tough one. That's a really tough one. Um, window tinting is fun. I think probably probably more fun than detailing. Uh, for the simple fact of the matter is, like sometimes you know you get a car that's been driven. Uh, you know it's got bugs. You know bug splatters on it and stuff, and then it it sits in storage or or just doesn't get washed for months and months and months and then you have to try to like the bugs and bird droppings and stuff will stain the paint um and you know you, you come out for a basic detail you do what you can but then you know it, this front end may need polished and they're not you know they don't want to pay for that or or whatever so it's kind of like uh because i i sometimes i just feel kind of like i didn't do good enough um, knowing full well that I did everything that I could and it's, you know, it's, it's a maintenance issue. Window tinting, you really don't have that. It's, uh, you, you either did the job or you didn't. So not so much of, uh, you can't really give yourself a hard time for the tent. Um, easiest car to tent. Uh, that's a good question. <coughs> Excuse me. So far, I think the easiest vehicle to tent would be a Chevy Silverado. Um, they usually have wide gaskets around the window frame, so they're usually pretty easy to cut. The only thing you have to worry about is like the top corner. When you roll down the front window, it exposes that top edge, so you have to make, you know, you, you start your backside a little bit lower, if that makes sense. The backside of your frame, uh, you cut that a little bit lower, and then you do your top edge and basically connect the dots. But there's no shrinking because the windows are, are flat. They are flat windows. You don't have to worry about shrinking them. Um, they're just all around. They're pretty easy to do. You can knock them out in a couple hours um, pretty easily, depending on if you're doing the whole truck or not, obviously. Uh, okay, so number five is when are you going to get a shop? Now, I always find this question kind of ironic because the people that ask me this, are usually uh, asking me this while I'm doing something at their house. <laughs> so they're, they're basically asking me uh, when it's not going to be convenient for them to hire me anymore. Uh, lucky for them, I don't plan on getting a shop anytime soon because I like being mobile. Having a shop, having a place, I mean, I work, 
you know, I'll work out in my garage for people that don't have a shop um, or don't have a garage that their car fits in or whatever. Uh, and that's good enough for me. Honestly, I don't really do a whole lot of stuff out of, out of here that's not for like me or, you know, friends, family, stuff like that. Um, and so I don't really want a shop because then I'll be limited to people in a geographical location and, you know, then you got all the overhead to worry about and stuff like that. Um, it's just way more convenient. You know, there's, there's tons of fixed location shops out there, uh, but there really aren't a whole lot of mobile detailers around here. So, um, you know, I don't plan on ever getting a shop unless I have employees to where I can do both, where I can have a mobile crew and have a fixed location crew. Because sometimes, some jobs, you know, it is it is nice to have uh, everything that you could ever want at your disposal. Hang on a second. Ugh, turn off the heat. Uh, but, yeah, so I don't... Whoa. <laughs> That's smoky in here. Um, I don't plan on getting a shop until I have the workforce so where I can do both. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stay mobile, um, you know, and a shop would just simply be an addition, not a limiting factor if if and when that, uh, that time comes. Um, so it's only a six-minute video. I've got a bonus question that I get asked a lot. What's the easiest car to detail? Uh, you know, it really depends. If we're talking interior versus exterior, uh, exterior, basically anything that's a metallic silver, um, paint is pretty much paint, but the color makes a big difference on like what shows up and what doesn't. So metallic silver is really great because y you like with white, you got to get like every little speck when you're like this close to the paint, looking at it, doing your thing with the clay bar or whatever, you can see every little imperfection. Now, where you step back a couple steps, then you don't see that as much, but me being a detail-oriented person, I see that, and then I'm, you know, spend four hours on the outside of a car that I really only should have spent two, and, you know, it is what it is. But metallic silver, uh, or really pretty much any silver, is pretty good. You won't notice a lot of the um, little, little specks of stuff, um, so it, it's just easier, basically. You can get it done faster, um, hides a lot of little imperfections. That's why that is metallic silver, um, <laughs> because I knew I wasn't going to be washing it and, and everything all the time like I did my old cars. Um, so on the interior, you know, that really just depends. Uh, there's a lot of different fabrics out there. I will say that Hondas usually are not fun to detail, um, the Civics and Accords. Cords, not so much. Specifics, the fit, uh, the type, any any type of low end car, like cheaper car, um, they typically have this carpet that's not like fibers. It's not like it doesn't stand up like regular carpet, um, and so like dirt just gets matted into it, and you never get it out, and it's a nightmare. And I hate dealing with those. Um, so the easiest to detail would be a higher end car. You know, something that's, you know, $40,000 or more expensive typically usually has good materials. It's made out of good quality materials that are meant to be clean. They clean up well. Um, or, I guess, anything that's driven by somebody that gets it detailed every couple months. <laughs> so, you know, if it's not getting real, really dirty, then it's, it's pretty easy to clean. So, uh, there you go. There's my top five slash six questions that I get on a regular basis in my business. And uh, if you ever have any other questions, you know, drop them in the comments, send me a message, text me, whatever. Um, you know, probably probably in another six months or so, we'll do another, another top five if the questions have changed, which maybe they will, maybe they won't. So uh, that's all I got for now, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.